three, two, one, zero. All engines running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. On July 20, 1969, the whole lab was invited at Bob Walker's home to watch the landing. We copy you down, Eagle. And of course, we watched it with all, like billions of other people on Earth, and hoped for a safe return. Everything went according to plan. And six weeks later, after the quarantine period, three of us, Bob Walker, Michelle Moret, and I went to Houston to get our allocation. From September 69 to the first Lunar Science Conference in January 1970, we worked days and most evenings, and it felt so great to be a part of all this. really the gift that keeps on giving because we can continue to analyze them with techniques that weren't even dreamed of when Apollo 11 launched 50 years ago. Our capability and our precision and our sensitivity to detect very, very small amounts of water has increased uh, orders of magnitude probably in the last uh, 10 or 20 years. I'm interested in that because I'm interested in the delivery of water to dry bodies in the solar system. Uh, that's a very interesting scientific problem to me in kind of a, a planetary scale uh, phenomenon, this delivery of volatiles and water to these bodies that accreted closer to the sun and should have been dry otherwise. A subset of the samples were actually collected on the moon and put into special containers, containers that were either sealed on the moon or sealed under vacuum on the moon and brought back to Earth to Johnson Space Center curated and sort of kept for future studies. The important thing about that deep sample is that it was deep enough that actually the material would have been very cold, frozen in fact. And so it may contain some of the volatile elements, um, including things like water or OH, that um, may exist in some of the very coldest parts of the moon. So we'll be opening the upper part of that drive tube and the lower part of the drive tube as part of the research projects that got funded.